Well, Jake from State Farm calls into the Dave Ramsey show and says that his wife is ready to leave, but still wants to stay in his house. Still wants him to pay the bills. They have a little boy, a year and a half old, and so she wants to stay, but she wants to date around, play the field, blah, blah, blah. And Dave, of course, gives him stupid advice. Let's go to it. It's a blessing. Well, we're honored. How can we help you? Um, so a little bit of a backstory. Um, I got married at a pretty young age. Um, so, you know, life is good. You know, we're doing the live baby step. Uh, we managed to pay off a lot of debt. And then um, got a, a three to six months of an emergency fund sitting. And Meaning he paid off the debt and got the emergency fund. That's okay. Here we go. Uh, so a year and a half ago, we were blessed with a little baby boy. And um, so now, um, you know, our marriage started getting really uh, rocky. We like had a hard time. And so um, now my wife, uh, she's saying how, like, she doesn't want to be together anymore. She doesn't love me anymore. Uh She's talking to somebody else, um, like in the middle of the night. I'll hear her on the phone with another person, and uh, in the middle of the night, what? Oh my goodness! When, should you be sleeping in the middle of the night? What's his wife doing all day with a year and a half boy that she's got the energy to be up half the night talking to some dude? My goodness! I guess we need to go back to the old days where the women had to wash the clothes by hand and. Pluck the chickens by hand. They didn't have time to be up all night. <clears throat> well, back in those days, right? They're wore out. They had time to be doing. Man, what's going? On? She's probably napping half the day when the kid's taking a nap. She's uh, out, and then up. Oh, I'm back up. Yeah, I'm ready for one o'clock rendezvous with my boyfriend now. What on earth? My good, put her to work. Wow. All right. I uh, just don't know what to do with that. And she wants to basically, like, live at home still, like, in the same house and so that she could raise our son. But it's, like, it's a very, like, it's a very difficult place for me to be in. So I just need some advice on that. Yeah, that is a difficult place to be in. This is why it's a difficult place to be in. Now, Dave's going to give some stupid advice, but this is why it's a difficult place to be in. When a woman proves that she is disloyal, she's done. Out. Benito, like, if you're disloyal, that's the number one thing that a man needs from a marriage is loyalty. If you prove that you're disloyal, then hit the streets like you're out of here. Now, here's but actually, my advice isn't going to be to kick her out, though. But let's see what Dave has to say here. How old are you? Uh, 24. Like, I, I wanted to make things work. We were watching a marriage counselor and everything. And for a while there, I thought things were going good, and then... Well, there's a mistake. As soon as you go to see the marriage counselor, you might as well save the money and just pay the lawyer, the divorce lawyer, because you... <laughs> I mean... Almost everybody I've heard said we went to marriage counseling. It freaking never works, ever. It, like, never... You Just save the money and save your time. Just go hit the gym or something. Like, it, you're done. About three weeks ago, she said she was done, like she was completely done. And then like a couple days later, she was talking to somebody else already. So it's a, it's a tough situation. And how old's the baby? A uh, couple days later. Man, it must be easy for these women to find a date out here. My goodness. Well, I guess maybe you just get on Tinder or Bumble and you can just start talking to somebody or whatever. Whew, that's quick. A couple days. Like, man, if I would, something would happen to my wife. I don't think it'd be a couple of days before I could find somebody like, wow, must be easy for women out here. <laughs> easy year and a half. Year and a half. Oh, Jake, I'm so sorry. I mean, in a sense, having an emotional affair and she's, you know, talking to people and all that. I'm like, she's breaking her vows um, that she made with you and choosing not to walk down a path that you guys can have healing and move past this. And so, so sure, no one's perfect in a marriage, um, but she's making these decisions consciously to to go against everything that you guys had in your marriage. And so, yeah, I mean, what they've said earlier, but I'm like, at that point, like she doesn't she doesn't get a lot of votes right now in your life, in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah, like, okay. I, so, I, I, so I, let me let me back up and just address your initial question, okay? Um, if you guys can work this out and be married, and with a marriage counselor walk through this this patch, and she can set the phone down and devote her life to you, you can set your issues down and devote your life to her, that's great. And I hope that's what can happen. 
if the, if she actually gets one. All right, so I do agree with Dave that that is the best choice. Keep the marriage together. That's the best choice. But if they've already been to marriage counseling and she's already said, I'm done, blah, blah, blah. I think she pretty much proves she's disloyal. And if a woman is disloyal, that's the number one thing you need in a marriage. If you don't have that, then forget it. It's done, over with, plan B, his plan B, dumb. Anyway. Once a divorce, you can't stop her. It's her. You can't make other people do things. Okay? Yeah. I can't make my wife do anything. Believe me. We've been married 40 years. I can't make her do anything. <laughs> Exactly. And she really can't make me do anything either, in all fairness. Okay. We all make decisions as individual adults. Okay. So you can't you can't make people do what you want to do. But what you can decide is what's right for you based on the decisions they're making. And mm -hmm. um, and you know when you Yeah. So now it's called damage control. Okay. Now now we're in damage control mode. She's gonna leave and you're in damage control. So how much damage do you want to try to control and mitigate? Let's see say out loud we're going to get a divorce and live in the same house and be roommates that that's just strange weird and dumb you know when you say that out loud that it is all of those things right yeah yeah exactly like, it, like it's, I, it's heartbreaking not even not even a possibility okay if we're going to go through a divorce that means we're not going to be married and we're going to have separate lives no we're not living yeah. in the same house now here's where i disagree with dave because we're talking about what's best for the child and what would be best for him when we're in damage control mode? If you're in damage control mode, is the best option for you to have your wife out of the house? Because you, I mean, you're basic. Whether you have a piece of paper that says you're married, or you don't have a mar or you don't have a piece of paper, you're still married. Like you can't ever get away from this person once you have a child with them. Once you've done the deed, you've planted the seed, the seed has come forth, she has bore your child for you, you can't ever get away from her. You will always, in a sense, be married to her, whether you have a piece of paper or not. So now we're in damage control mode. All right, let's see what we do. She doesn't want to leave, so, Jake? Is that the, yeah, like, she, she wants to stay in the house. She wants to be in the house. With you, yeah, or she just wants yeah. the house? No, she wants to, because she doesn't have a degree in anything. And uh, for her to right now, like the way the market is right now, for even renting a home would be super hard for her. So she basically wants to just live there, and like, for, like she does not want to go back to work. So that's because she wants to raise our son, <laughs> which like it, it would be better for him. I agree. No, it wouldn't. It just, no, no, it wouldn't. He does not need to be raised by divorced parents living in the same house together. <clears throat> so here's where I disagree with Dave again. If they get divorced, He'll most likely be paying alimony and he'll be paying child support because she doesn't have a job. She doesn't have a degree. He's the sole breadwinner. So now he's going to pay for her to live somewhere else. He's going to pay for his child too in child support. And when he, if he got 50 50 custody, which, you know, maybe he would get 50, maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. But if he got 50 50 custody, then he would have to find someone else who he doesn't even know to take care of his child while he's at work. Is that a good option? No, it sucks. This is called damage control now. We've got to mitigate the damage from the harlot wife, okay? <laughs> so, all right, you're going to pay for two households now. You're going to pay for child support for the baby. And you're going to have to find your own child care while you're at work, okay? That that's a bad idea. That's that's really bad compared to. All right, we'll do a divorce. You can stay in my house, basically be my live-in maid, my live-in child caretaker. Take care of our son or his son, and then go do whatever on the side. I don't know. Is that ideal? No, that sucks. But that sucks less, I think, than that, hey, I got to pay for two households, child support, all this kind of stuff. And I got to find my own child care. And to top it off, now this is the worst part because I've got a year and a half year old daughter right now and I've got four other kids. I will pay a lot of money in order to see my kids every day. That's very, very, very valuable to me. In order for me to see my kids every single day, that's worth a lot to me. Whatever I got to pay to make that happen, I would pay it. Whatever I would have to do to make that happen, I would do it. I want to see my kids every day. 
that's so freaking weird it's psychologically damaging to your son no yeah no that's not better for your son I, it sounds this poor girl she's but the alternative is worse this is where dave gets it way wrong if mom goes and lives alone she gets a new boyfriend who's this boyfriend she has See some kind of, you know, perp. What would he do to his son? He's not around. He doesn't know. Mom, maybe she's drunk, whatever. He doesn't know because it's not in his house. Is his son more at risk then? Absolutely, he is more at risk then with some guy he doesn't even know as opposed to him being in his home all the time and mom goes out on a little tryst or whatever. Yeah, that sucks, but now it's time to be adult. It's damage control mode. So screwed up. <laughs> I don't want to work <laughs> and earn money, but I don't want to be married. <laughs> well, darling, you can't. You get to choose one or the other. That's not the way this is going to oh, work yeah, out. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think if we're going to get wrong, 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 the state, divorce, and family courts have set it up, so she may still not have to work with alimony should we have some places in the u.s you can get lifetime alimony now they haven't been married long enough probably for lifetime alimony but i'm sure she's going to get some if she hasn't ever worked he's been the sole breadwinner and she doesn't want to go back get an education go to work blah blah blah, blah. he's going to be paying he's going to be paying dave and dave knows this i mean dave's not stupid he knows this what dumb advice to give this poor guy 24 years old and a Bad situation, and it's going to get way worse with this. All right, let's go. You get a divorce that she's going to have to go get an apartment. You guys are going to sell the house, and you're going to go get an apartment. Okay. No, you're not going to live together. All right. I mean, yeah. Does no. that wow, does that sound great? Look at listen to that. Oh, my goodness, listen to that. Yeah. You tell her, we're going to sell our house. I'm going to get an apartment. You're going to get an apartment, and we're going to live apart. And I'm going to see my kid maybe 50% 50, 50 of the time, if I'm lucky, 50% of the time. And then we'll go from there. That's the best? That's that's not the best situation, I don't think. I don't think that's the best. That, does that make, I mean, that, you knew that, right? Yeah, I did. And I just, I just, like, I didn't want to be the guy to just like, decide something, you know, and work, to not work out in the end. So that's why I think. Well, if, like, the, if, call, if you guys staying in the same you. house involves healing your marriage, I'm all for it. Yeah, but not yeah, work out. In the, there is nothing where you divorce and live in the same house together that works out in the end. You are right. a highly unattractive single guy at this point. That yeah. you live in a house with your ex because it says it has yeah. a big arrow above your head that says stupid. Oh, wait a minute now. The halo of your head that would say more stupid is she divorces you and you pay for her new apartment. You pay for child care. You don't get to see your son at least half the time, maybe more. And you don't know who's in the apartment with her, the new boyfriend she's bringing in or whatever. That's even more. You could write more stupid on your forehead for doing that. Maybe if she's willing to live there. Boy, I don't know. You might <clears throat> you might consider that situation. Let's listen to the end here. Such a kind a sweet guy. person. A sweet so guy. to have the conversation with her, Jake, is that she's doing this. Like, that's yeah. my thing. You're not the one putting her out on the street and not letting her be home with her child. She's making decisions about her life that is now choosing to isolate herself because she's chosen to go against her vows to her husband. So, like, not letting her be home with her child. He's only going to get to see the child 50% of the time if this goes through. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, she's doing it, but it's damage control. You have to make the best of a stupid situation, of a bad situation here. At this point, you have to be an adult. Make the best of it. Yeah, it sucks. You reap what you sow, and there's a level of consequences that she has to face because she's making big girl decisions, and now she's about to get some big girl results, and she's got to deal with that. Like that, that's It's unfair to you to be the brunt of all of it. Yeah, she needs to face the consequences of this. No! The state will make sure that she faces as little consequences as possible. Are these people, like, naive? I don't know if they're naive or just dumb. Like, I think they're naive because I don't think Dave is that dumb. Like, Dave knows what's going on. He hears these stories all the time.
But man, it's just unfair to you, Jake. Like I feel for yeah, you. Jake, I'm like, because you you're a you kind person. Fair. Even the way you're asking the question, you're so nice. No, I'm not. So sure. there's a I'm level pretty that. Sure, pretty sure. It doesn't matter what's fair, and it doesn't matter that he's a good person. It's a matter of damage control. How are you going to control the damage now from an unfaithful wife, a disloyal wife? Again, I think loyalty is one of the top things you need in a marriage. If you don't have that, forget about it. If this was my son, I hope my son, I've got three sons, and I hope none of them are ever in this situation. But the way these women are going, maybe they will be. I don't know. Like it keep hearing stories like this all the time. I know personally people who have the same thing happen to them where it's just like, yeah, they've been married. They had a good marriage. And all of a sudden, ah, I'm not in love with you. I'm, I'm done. But I know a guy who's got two, two girls. That's what happened to him. His wife was like, yeah, everything was going great. She was just like, ah, I don't know. I just want to date around. Um, I mean, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. You didn't do anything wrong. Mm, I just want to do my own thing. Well, I was like, what? Anyway, <laughs> it's damage control. I would say this is, this is thinking from a patriarchal view. He may actually get off lucky, really lucky, if she still wants to live in his home. And so here, now I need a com give me a comment, like, subscribe, and give me a comment. Now here's here's my take. Here's the post millennial man's take. I was thinking about this as I heard this video. The best situation for him, if his wife is disloyal and she won't marry him, stay married to him, and be faithful to him, is it could be because of the way the divorce and family courts are set up. It could be to get legally divorced and still have her live in his home, take care of his son. He sees his son every day. He knows where his son is. He has control of where his son is and where he's going if she's willing to actually listen to him with input about his son. And he pays her a monthly stipend for doing things around the home. She goes from being wife to being live-in nanny, right? Because let's say this man was rich, which I doubt he is, but let's say he's rich. If this happened and he had his son, let's say his wife just ran off and he was rich, he would hire a live-in nanny. But yeah, take control Give her a, a monthly stipend then of like, okay, here's what I'm going to give you for groceries here, blah, blah, blah. If you get divorced, you're going to have separate everything, separate bank accounts, take her name off of everything. She is now your nanny in the home, which is what she says she wants to do. She said, I just want to stay, take care of our son, live here, and then I'm going to go out and blah, blah, blah. Say, okay, here's your hours of operation. <laughs> you got to be here from... Six to six, 12 hour shift until I get home from work. And then whatever. And I'm going to pay you this amount. Boy, you would be money far ahead if you did that <clears throat> than, than if you got to pay for two households. Like Dave said, sell your house, get her an apartment. You get an apartment. Then you got to find childcare for your son, blah, 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 all this stuff. Forget that. Like, man, if she's willing to live there, I would legally divorce. And then set it up like that patriarchal system where you're in control and she needs you financially for the support. If this was my son, I think I would really tell him to consider that. If she would be willing to do that and she wouldn't take you to the cleaners and the divorce and all that kind of stuff, if she would just get it, be done, still live there, take care of your son, your son's in your own home, you know what he's doing, I think that's the best situation. Let me know, though. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about that? Boy, this is bad. I keep hearing these stories over and over again. This is bad stuff. And we got to get this turned around. Patriarchy. It's the only way. <clears throat> but even with that, Christ is winning. He is building his church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Until next time, this is the Post-Millennial Man.